Throughout the show, we've been talking about imagination and intention. And now I would like to share a story of Rupert's Tale with you. It's called Rupert's Magical Imagination. Before we start though, I'd like to mention that the illustrations or pictures you're going to see in this video clip are not the ones that, that you usually see in our books. The ones you see in our books are made by a professional artist. Her name is Tanya Bennington Osborne. She's definitely a friend of Rupert, one of his best buddies, and my close friend as well. If you've ever seen one of our books, you'll know just what a delightful illustrator she is. And if you've seen any of the illustrations in our show so far, you'll know those are her illustrations as well. Now the ones we're going to use today are ones that I made using a pencil so that um, I could show Tanya what it was I was thinking of when I wrote the story. And then that way she knows better what it is I'd like her to paint. So you'll have to use your imagination while I'm reading the story. I'm hoping that maybe this story will help you to understand a little bit more about imagination and intention and just how important they are. This story is called Rupert's Magical Imagination. And here's how it goes. Rupert the Rabbit sat very quiet, very still, hiding behind a big tree on the top of a hill. This was his tree, his hill, his very own special place, right next to a meadow that was a round kind of space. Many times he had seen lots of people here before and listened to their stories, their rituals, and lore. One girl had held him in her lap while she had cried. Others had welcomed him with their arms open wide. He'd listened to their drums, their chants, and their songs. Rupert had begun to feel like he belonged. Still, there was a boy and a girl on the other side of his tree, and it was hard, oh so hard, not to just turn away, not to flee. Nature is nature, he knew for sure that much was true, and he knew just what his own was telling him to do. But he'd learned many things from the girls and the boys, even with their strange ways and all of their loud noise. And so he stayed, sitting very quiet and very still, listening to the children talk there on the top of the hill. The bubble is blue, said the girl. That's the color I see. And what about you, she asked the boy. Will you share with me? Well, the boy started to say, then stopped for a minute. I don't know how to explain, or how to begin it. Take your time, it's okay, the girl said. Just tell me what's in your heart. Rupert smiled to himself, knowing that was the best place to start. He thought he might know what they were talking about but wasn't quite sure beyond all shadows of doubt. So he snuck closer to the other side of the tree, where he could hear that they would not be able to see. The girl held her hands up like she was holding a ball, but there was nothing inside of them, nothing at all. She said, inside a circle is a very special place. Together we use our intentions to make sacred space. Intentions are the meaning we give to what we do. That much I know, said the boy but not what else to do. Yes, the girl agreed. It's what you have inside of you and the reasons behind all of the things that you do. When people come together in a circle to pray, they usually do so in a very special way. Well, sure, the boy said. I've done it lots of times before. I've been in circles and done that and a whole lot more. Well then, try it with me and let's see what we will see. Imagine a bubble of blue surrounding this tree. Rupert didn't like what he heard, not even a bit. They were making a circle with him inside of it. Hang on just a minute, the boy said with a shout. Let's just take a minute to figure this all out. I know all the directions, north, east, south, and west. I know the moon cycles and when things work the best. I understand colors and why we use different hues. I even know some of the reasons for the herbs people use. Crystals, rocks, plants, elements, and knots, wands and cauldrons, feathers, pans, and pots. I know all of these things and many, many more. I could probably list everything in the store. All right, then, said the girl with a puzzled frown. Why do you want to stop or even slow down? Well, because, said the boy with his hands spreading wide, 
I don't understand about the part that's inside. Oh, Rob, the girl sighed, a sad smile on her face, but that above all is the most important place. When people come together to put magic into play, they have to believe in the things that they do and they say. But what if I don't know what to say or to do? And what if someone believes differently than you? Well, Rob, those are some good questions. I'm really glad you stopped to ask. But I don't have all the answers. I'm not sure I'm up to this task. Rupert sat very quiet, wondering some things himself. Were these answers people found in books sitting on a shelf? Or did they sometimes find a friend or two to help them think and to work these things through? He had talked with fairies, a white owl, and even an old crone. He'd never had to make sense of things completely on his own. Imagination may be an important key. At least, said the girl, that's the way it seems to me. Imagination? asked the boy with some surprise. You mean the things you only see with your mind's eye? Yes, the girl replied, smiling and nodding her head. The things you can see with your mind, just like you said. When we're in circle calling quarters and everyone is facing west, we think real hard of water, its many forms, and how we like it best. Some will be thinking of oceans, rivers, babbling brooks, or lakes, maybe even rain, or any other form that water takes. Okay, Kim, said the boy, that much I know and is easy to understand. We give respect to the elements and we ask them to give us a hand. But please explain how imagination works, how it comes into play. Rupert leaned a, little, leaned a little closer then, wondering what the girl would say. Do you believe in water? she asked. Do you know that it's real? Tell me, Rob, is water something you can touch and smell and feel? Well, that's just a silly question, the boy replied with a sneer. Water is everywhere, far and wide, and even very near. But what about when you can't see it at all or know where it is found? Can you picture it in your mind even when water isn't around? Well, sure, of course I can, said Rob. It's easy. I don't really even have to try. If I close my eyes, I can almost hear it in a river, rushing past close by. Water's easy to imagine, a very easy thing to do, he smiled at the girl then, saying, I can almost taste it, too. So can you imagine air, fire, and earth in the same way? Can you see and feel and smell them, even when they're far away? By thinking of things, you can bring them closer and help to make them real. I think with magic, imagination is a big part of the deal. Like if I want to feel protected and safe from any harm, I imagine myself wrapped inside my mother's loving arms. Could I do the same? asked Rob, thinking of a big wall made of bricks. Oh, sure, Rupert heard Kim say. I think that would really do the trick. Think about it for a moment and take the time to think it through. If you're scared and think of someplace safe, you make safety come to you. So then, the boy said slowly, thinking hard, if what you say is true, then what's important is what you're thinking and what's inside of you. It's the same when we're in circle and want to honor air. We think hard of this element with chants or songs or prayer. If everyone does these things together, our thoughts combine as one, and then before you know it, what we want to happen has been done. Like the time when my brother broke his leg and it seemed to heal real fast? You think? asked Rob. He got well quick because we all got together and asked? There are a lot of things that can be done, Kim replied, a happy smile on her face. Remembering our intention and imagination, each holds a special place. And if I don't feel the way you do, if I think what you say is wrong, what happens then? The boy asked. What do I do and where do I belong? Magic, intentions, and imagination are ours to use each day. It's up to each of us, I think, to choose which will be our own way. If we choose to come together, each should play their own part by giving to the whole the very best that's in their heart. Well, I don't think I have all the answers yet. That much, I'm sure. Maybe, said Rob, that's something time and practice may one day cure. Rupert saw Kim smile again from where he was hiding behind the tree. So are you ready to try again, she asked, to make a bubble with me? Rupert decided it was time for him to go, so hopped quietly away. One day he knew he would probably be ready, but today was not the day. 
Still, he wished the children well and hoped they both learned something valuable this day, then realized that, with his intention, he'd created magic in his own way. In our next segment, which is a short meditation, you'll also get to use your intentions and imagination because you're going to imagine yourself being a bumblebee. So let's buzz along and get right to it. Buzz. <laughs>